and we're back. Birds are up flying. Hopefully they stay up for a little bit today. I want to get some food in the trays for them. Um, nice day today too. Not too, no wind and um, pretty relaxing. So hopefully they do pretty well. We'll get some food in there for them anyway. I do want to check out the breeding birds as well that we've got um, and check if all those eggs we've got coming through are fertile, which is really good because we will have some free sections over here very soon. Once I sort out some of these birds and these ones over here, um, <clears throat> there's still a lot I need to go through. It's got a lot of birds that um, I still have to make a decision on what I'm doing with because there's a few there. Um, I think we brought in too many birds last year, but it's really good to bring in birds and sort of sift through them and find out some ones that are going to work for us because there is... Uh, um, how do I say it? There's just a couple of pairs that are really standing out above a lot of the rest. Um, basically, the young birds that they breed are really good so far. So I don't want to, you know, jinx myself, touch wood. But they are doing quite well. We've still got them here. Um, let me get some food in here and then we'll jump over and have a look at the breeders. These guys are up flying. Hopefully for at least another half an hour. Okay, so breeding mix is mixed in with their depuritive stuff, which is heavier on the oats. Giving them a little bit of a treat today. Um, basically, I'm gonna try and aim for one toss this weekend. I might have to take them back out to 22 kilometers. I may even take them a little bit further. We'll just see, I was contemplating two shorter tosses, but um, we're running, running a little bit late on our um, ETS rings. They still haven't turned up. I'm gonna have to try and juggle the, th I think I've got 32 rings. Um, and then I'll see how many birds we've got left after Saturday's toss and then Sunday We can't I'm not going to toss on the Sunday because I want to spend time Set the clock up put all the ETS rings on the birds um, And enter them into the clock and then do set the clock up for just a little bit of testing make sure that works because Next weekend is our first race. So this weekend's our only free race to free week. Sorry to um Every weekend to tidy up any loose ends which is getting the ETS rings on making sure everything's ready to go basically and I think there's a new firmware for my clock too I just found out which is last minute <laughs> oh I am definitely thinking about that benzene clock I tell you it's um it's looking good day by day because um this year's been a little bit difficult with the top pigeon so I don't you know, I don't know what's going on but yeah, anyway, won't go into that, but so far put the community tab poll up and the M3 is looking like the better option. As for everyone else, it's voting, so it's it's definitely a lot more expensive. So we'll see how we go. There's no rush yet, but it's something I can start saving towards, but I may just consider the M2. M3 is, I think, are better with a lot of birds, um, but the M2 might be a, you know, a bit better for us because our budget is you know quite tight. Um, but I'll get some prices and see if there's not much difference. Like people are saying between the M2 and the M3, we may look at that. Um, but the G2 is still sufficient for what we do because we're not going to be racing like every single race anyway. We'll just be doing um, <clears throat> a few races here and there. Um, so there's still a lot to worry about. But that's something to do, um, you know, later in the year. Maybe even early next year if we need to. But I just need to start saving for it anyway and getting ready for that. Um, birds are still moving pretty well got the flag up I'm just trying to minimize maximize sorry as much time as I possibly can with the birds keep them up in the air because uh, we don't have much time left and I've only really got one more toss and then it's just busy with work and then hopefully we'll be ready for that first toss first race I'm just all over the place today it's been a busy day at work I've changed jobs and I've got a very very busy busy job again which um, it's making things difficult when it comes to pigeons too so we're just trying to balance it and uh, I think these birds will be ready we'll enter, next weekend we'll enter them in the sprint one and the sprint two um, talk about that a little bit more next weekend um, I think we're as ready as we can be we'll just get that last toss in and um, as much loft flying as we can get in in the next fortnight there's not even a fortnight really it's like a, a week now hey, where's the days go i tell you so um yeah we'll see but i'll get these birds in shortly and then we'll have a look in here and see how many fertile eggs we got because um i've got a lot of work to do between now and next weekend's first race oh next weekend it's coming up so quick 
I'll just watch them, make sure they don't come in. They're a little bit funny today. They're not as excited to fly as they were yesterday. Um, so I'm just going to keep an eye on them, try and keep them up. Uh, what I need to do is swap those pairs around so these ones can come out and ones can stay in. Uh, a bit of a pain at the moment because we've got one cockbird that's a real pain and um, doesn't look like any new eggs. So at this point we've got one, two, three, four pairs on eggs out of the nine. So still another five to go, which, you know, a bit of a pain, but I'm sure they'll be ready. So tomorrow, hopefully I can knock off, um, get home, maybe nearly knock Friday if possible, and I can start um, going through and sort some of these birds out and get a bit of cleaning up and that done in here. But I'm still waiting on a few pairs to settle because some of these hens are first time laying. So it um, might just be a little bit slower for them to lay, but uh, you know, can't complain too much. We're getting there. Like I said before, there's no pressure. We'll just get a few out as we can at this point we've got like eight babies or something on the cook as well so that's, pl that's plenty you know um, for one round because in the original yellow team i think there might have been only eight or ten birds in there anyway so it's only a small team um you do need to get ready for the pole because we need to figure out what kind of color we're going to put on next so um this is one of the yellow teams she's been tossed pretty heavily um but she was originally bred for stock so she's a daughter of 83 and you can see she's um, got some eggs in there. These ones are fertile, so that is really, really good because this will be the first cross that we are bringing in with one of our Gabby cocks. So that's going to be a very interesting mix, this one, um, because, you know, the Gabbies can go all the way out to 800. And I've heard some stories here in Australia, they're racing them out to 1,000 kilometres. So um, for us, that's going to be good. We're generally going to stick around that 600 to 700 kilometre mark anyway, so I'm not too stressed. Um, we just really want that tough homing instincts. Um, one of our other hens, she actually was part of the yellow team, but um, she done a little bit of racing last year. She didn't do that great, but she's still here. She's got the ETS ring on there. I'm going to take that off her this season because I'm utilising her. She is a daughter of 83 as well. Beautiful little hen. And she will be uh, paired up for a round or two with the cock she's with. I think she's with the cassada at the moment. Beautiful hen, this one. Good type, nice size. And both those eggs are fertile too, so that is... Um, really good to see because that is one pairing I'm eager to see how the cassats blend into my little family of birds um, so far they've been good they've been traveling pretty well we've still got all the ones that we've bred um, only four so we'll see how that pans out and come here girl and our best hen both her eggs are fertile as well so we've candled them um, all these eggs are going to hatch around about the same time within a day or two so we'll be able to wean them out really well um, hopefully this pairing is what we're asking for and hopefully that breeds a little bit of strength or something into her babies i've only got one of her babies left in the race team the others just disappeared really quickly so i'm hoping she can i'm hoping these eggs are the ticket that's all i can hang out for now uh, so i'm hoping the other pairs do sit down soon um, I can actually probably take this front off. I might do it on the weekend now. I just really run out of time during the week. And I just want to try and keep up daily videos as much as possible for you guys because uh, this time of the year, especially with everything's going on, um, we can miss an absolute lot. Now, these two eggs in here, she only just laid that second one today. So I probably won't candle these till next week. But um, I am really excited to get a couple, at least two rounds out of this pairing. Um, big Leo and that hen which has been producing some quite nice babies for us so uh, well they've only bred one and it's one of the toughest babies i've ever seen that's the one that had a throat ripped out and it's done all the tossing no problems so yeah just ticking along i think just little bits and pieces and see how we go so the plan will be oh one bird landed that's probably the lazy one um is we will pick a color out of those four rings to put onto these ones We'll move them across and we'll train them out, um, try and get them out every single day to fly. And then hopefully by the end of the year, Christmas time, I would like to have these babies we're breeding now out to 100 kilometers. And then we'll wean out any weak ones that are in there too. So the plan is hopefully by Christmas, which is the end of the year, we'll start molting on the new year really early. We can, um, basically, we don't need to loft fly that much because I'll start molting. And then we go through that period, which is just finished where the falcons hit us every single day and we can't loft fly. But then I'm, I'll be like, 
I'm not too stressed then because I know that those birds have been out to 100 kilometers and it will be easy to get the fitness back into them. And these birds look like they want to come back down. So um, stay tuned. It's a little bit, um, a bit of a different method than normal that we're doing here. But um, you just got to work what um, is going to work for yourself, really. And for us, I'm just trying to formulate and fine tune something that's going to work here without too much stress and you know chewing up too much time because I've got a young family and work is just getting busier. So we'll just try and find that balance. Um, hopefully, fill these two sections with birds that have been out to 100 kilometers by the end of the year, and then any birds will, that aren't up to scratch, we've either lost them or we can just move those ones on. And then we're ready for next year's race season, which is pretty exciting. And hopefully done all the breeding by the time for we've had a rest in between then. And then we can set some pairs down for a one loft race and actually enter some birds in a one loft that I really want to. Because last year, the ones we got in this year, which tossing is going to start shortly for those. Um, I didn't really like them too much, but I just wanted to enter. So, um, yeah, I'll keep you guys in the loop with that. And um, I will see you very soon. These birds are still going. Could be there for a while, hopefully.